mighty hand, His loving hand. Jesus offered me the chance to be a better man, and He's offering the same to every woman, child, and man. It's done by inviting us to place our total trust in a place not made with hands, in a place built with His hands. Sacrifice. He gave his own life. Willingly he died in his church. We should remain. But that was his plan to invite you to transform, to become a new person. His hand, hand, his hand. Pick me up. to the How You Love Me special, where we're debuting new music from a collaboration between Ron Walker and Exodus 2.0. Prepare not only for the premiere of the video, but also an extensive look at the career of Ron Walker. He is one of my absolute favorite artists, as I'm sure he is yours. So sit back, relax, and let's have a great time as we watch and learn and be inspired. Take care. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, man. Boom, 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 boom. I really boom, like this one. Boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. Come on, Leandre. Let's do this. Oh Jesus, how I want to. Oh Jesus, how I want to. Oh, how I want to be. How I want to be. You accept the words that they didn't love you. Oh Jesus, how I want to. Oh Jesus, how I want to.
Today to be in the company of uh, some of our fellowships finest. And as we were working on the preparation for the release of Ron Walker's newest track, How You Love Me, a collaboration between Ron and Exodus 2.0, we said, wait, you know, there's, there's no way that we could just release this and not do a little bit more in terms of uh, kind of working up to the release. So we had the idea to reach out to quite a few people who were connected to Ron, 
uh, who have a background with Ron and who could talk to us about his legacy, his ministry, uh, what he's meant to our fellowship. And that leads us to uh, these three individuals that I'm with today. And uh, when I moved to LA in 1983, um, these three individuals impacted me greatly. Uh, we have Brother Willard Krigler with us today, who is uh, one of the ministers at the Upland Church of Christ. And Krig, as he's affectionately <laughs> called, uh, was my first youth minister. And, oh, wow. Uh, he inspired me with the puppet show and uh, the basketball in the parking lot and the extravaganza and the national and state youth conferences. And uh, he's just was at that time in my life, such a major, major influence. And I'm just indebted uh, to him. So when we thought about uh, Ron, uh, actually James Riley, I reached out to James. I said, James, do you have any video or any pictures. He said, no, that's actually before I got into photography. He said, the mm -hmm. one you need to call is Craig. Yes. And, 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 <laughs> and, and so, and then I remembered Craig would always have a video camera or something always around. So he's got Craig, a vault. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, and then we have Adam Thompson with us. Adam is uh, a an actor extraordinaire. Um, I oh, first you. heard. Face extraordinaire. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I first heard Adam oh, doing his you. thing on yeah, Beyond yeah. the Starry Skies. And that's mm -hmm. when he just really blew my mind, his smooth and silky voice and those tones and you know, I, you know, every time I see him, I want to get his autograph. I mean, oh, come on. <laughs> such, such a phenomenal talent, and, you know, his voice. Okay. And again, as I've just said, on top of all of that, he can act. And, and yes. we're glad to have him Thank with you, us man. on today. Sure. And then who can say enough about Sharon Harris? Ooh. She <laughs> is a legend. Yes. Uh, I can't yeah. tell you <laughs> how many times at Southwestern Christian College yep. that we listened to Sharon sing Center yeah. Man. Yeah. And, Man. Uh, you know, from her voice, her tone, her depth, her highness, uh, you know, women aren't really singing soprano today. You know, everybody's <laughs> out there. <laughs> and uh, so to know that, you know, she can sing all parts, but that soprano is just so unique, uh, comes from a singing tradition, and it, it, it's just such a delight to be in her company. So when you put Adam and Craig and Sharon, you're going to hear some great memories of Ron and his impact uh, in the L.A. area. So oh, let me right, see, um... let's about your experience with Ron Walker. Sure. I met Ron probably 80, well, I really heard of Ron around 79. Mm -hmm. Yeah, around 79, um, hearing hearing cassette tapes of him. Wow. Yeah, this was before the Cool Inside time. This was back when he was kind of singing all the same stuff that George was singing. And so I thought it was George singing his song. Right. <laughs> They right. said, no, no, man, that's his new cat, Ronald Walker. And so um, I met him uh, singing on tour around 83 or 84 um, and singing with his family, uh, his mom, his, sister, his two sisters, and his brother. Um, and his mom was amazing. But so was his sister. I mean, just crazy, crazy, amazing singers. Um and I still remember, I mean, when I first met him, I really wasn't all that interested in meeting him. He had a sister. One of his sisters was cute. <laughs> hey, it was, yeah, that's, you know, that's that a fate was, I know. Mark Keep already know. That's, that's how it was. <laughs> Keep it <laughs> real. You know? <laughs> you know, she was cute. She wasn't trying to talk to me, though. Zero. <laughs> Zero chance I had with her. Come, come to find out later, she didn't know I liked her at all. Oh, wow. That's how she was with everybody. It wasn't personal. <laughs> I don't know if that's better or worse. But we became friends, and she became this speaker. She would be speaking every place. Um, 
Anyway, that's when I first met him. Hey guys, download your copy of The Lord is in This Place. Make sure you do it. Do it today. I was actually transitioning from the military uh, to civilian life. And I was thinking to myself, I said, well, um, I was still at the point where I was trying to figure out what I was going to do. And I had made a trip to California just to visit. I was in Northern California. And I made a phone call to a friend of mine, George Pendergrass. I know a lot of you guys know who he is. Oh, he yeah. was then a member of the Vaughn Street Church of Christ back in 1985. And I was on the phone with him. I said, George, I'm in the process of making a decision on what I'm going to do with my life. I said, look, um, I'm contemplating possibly coming to California, but I need a good reason to do so. And he said, man, he said, come on out here, man. He said, uh, you know, we'll find something for you. And I was talking to uh, Dwayne Winrow. Dwayne Winrow came on the phone and he said, brother, you come on out here and, and, and we'll get something for you. Well, you know, you just come on out here. You will do the rest. And the rest is history. So I came out in 1985 and George, myself, and Adam Thompson, we were a trio for quite a while. And I, um, I initially was going to move back to Buffalo because I just wasn't seeing anything to keep me there. But uh, over time, George, Adam, and myself, we got to talking. And I said, well, and to, to give you a little bit of uh, humor in this, we sat down at the table at George and Pam's apartment. And I said, George, I said, I'm, I'm thinking about moving back, man. I, this, this just isn't for me. This, 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 this is not for me. And um, there was a carton of milk on the table. <laughs> and um, there were two glasses. George and Adam were sitting there. And George and Adam were rather depressed of, over the fact that I was thinking about leaving. So they were literally drinking their sorrows away in milk. Ah. And... Uh, it was so funny, man. It was so, you had to be there. And George was like, God, oh, Adam, he said, you want another one, man? So he poured him a double. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and I said, look, okay, man, you got, you, you're killing me. You're killing me. I, I'll go ahead and stay. So from that point on, um, I made LA my home and, and never looked back. And that's pretty much how I ended up coming out and staying in California. <laughs> now, believe it or not, if it wasn't for my wife, I wouldn't be at Normandy because what happened was, um, I guess it was around 86, um, Renaissance had came back from St. Louis. We had done a performance in St. Louis. And um, I was about to come into the auditorium at Normandy for worship service. And behind me, I heard a voice yell out, Ron Walker. And I turned around and I saw, I saw, I call her Lisa. And I yelled, and I, and I knew her from Southwestern because we, we attended Southwestern together. And I called out Delisa Jackson. And um, from that time forward, um, we never looked back. So we, we, we talked and um, after worship service was over with, I guess they had some type of a fellowship upstairs at Normandy. Cause I remember going upstairs. That's where all the fellowships were. And we talked and talked. And um, I didn't think anything was going to come out of that. You know, we, you know, we were longtime Southwestern Christian College classmates. But I went home, and before I knew it, um, we were talking on the phone, and I mentioned it to George and Pam. I said, George and Pam, I, I think, I think Lisa and I are dating now. So um, <laughs> we've been we've been dating, and and before you know it, uh, we were already discussing marriage. You know, we were discussing wow. marriage. We only dated. We dated one year before we got married. So we got married um, May 16th of 1987. And um, I left Vaughn Street, went to Normandy and never looked back. Never, mm -hmm. I was so impressed with Brother Pitts, you know, mm -hmm. as a minister and just the whole congregation, they were so warm. I said, this is it, this is my home. And I pretty much said, well, wherever Lisa goes, I go, you know, I mean, <laughs> right. you're married. You got you and your wife have to go. So, <laughs> so oh, no, oh, don't no, no, I know. Yep. No, so I that's know. how I transitioned from Buffalo to Vaughn Street um, to uh, Normandy because George had left Vaughn Street too. 
and he went to worship with uh, Brother Green. And I said to him, I, said, I know this brother's not going to leave Vaughn Street, ask me to come to California and leave and leave me here at Vaughn Street. So I left Vaughn Street and went to Normandy. And right. the rest is history, you know. So, mm -hmm. and that's where all Renaissance rehearsals were at Normandy. Normandy was at there. Normandy. It was, it was, yes. That, the song of George always came to me when he, I guess, I don't know if, if there was a challenge. I always loved the challenge. And um, George had all, we had already had the idea of, of recording the album and everything. And George had pretty much most of the songs set for the album. But he said, well, we need a, a title song. And um, it's funny how songs kind of come to me. I, I really need a challenge. And when I say challenge, I mean a time challenge. I say, hey, man, in a couple of days, we need a song. We need a song. And I came up with the song. I guess it took me about a week to come up with this song. And um, I said, I got to come up with something simple that George and I have never done before, that we've never led before. And so I came up with Beyond the Starry Skies after listening to some song circulating, you know, and stuff. And I decided to adapt a song that I heard, an old Western song. Believe it or not, that's where that, that melody sort of comes from, an old cowboy Western. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, let me take this and just take the mood of it and turn it into a gospel song that George and I can lead. I had no idea it was going to be on the album. But we went into Capitol Records in Hollywood, recorded this album, and Beyond the Starry Skies was the title song. I only wrote two songs on that entire album, but they were sort of the the anchors of the whole album it was the first and the last songs on the album. And that's pretty much it. Well, let me, I, I was probably the first person to, um, to, to see Ron or meet Ron because uh, George had come to a Bond Street Church of Christ. Mm -hmm. He was a youth minister. And I had right. actually told him when I was at Southwestern, because I always have had great admiration, I always wanted to sing with George. And so um, when I was on tour, quick story, when I was on tour, we went to Love a Christian. George was still a Love a Christian. And I sang, uh, I sang one of his songs off of that, off of that, uh, off of that family. album. Yeah, yeah, off a of family. family album. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, and George, uh, he, he dug it a little bit. So we became good friends. And then I told him, said, man, uh, you need to look at this job at Bond Street as the as the head youth minister. He got the job, and I was at and I went on to Pepperdine, or I was at Abilene. He during the summer I came no during the winter I came home winter break. He said, "Man, I, I'm putting a group together. I want you to sing bass." I was like, <laughs> me? <laughs> of course, of course. So anyway, I wound up coming to uh, Pepperdine. Uh, Really, I was just there because I wanted to sing with George, sing in a, in a group. And uh, he said, I got to get some more people in. And we were at Bond Street Church of Christ. He said, I'm going to get this cat named Ron Walker. He sang Cool Inside. You remember that song? Said, yeah, yeah, I remember that. That dude was cold, man. You should, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> he got Ron to jump off of one of those trucks he was driving in, like, within a day. Ron didn't have a job. He didn't have nowhere to stay. And he was all in. <laughs> yeah. That's how George, that's how Ron got to uh, to Pacoima, and and then we then George said, "Well, we, we got to get a soprano. We got to got to get a soprano." And he said, "Sharon Harris." And we were all like, "She's the one." <laughs> yes, yeah. And, and I, I went to school with Sharon. We were at yeah. Southwestern together for I think yeah. a year, and yeah. uh, yes, uh, sing like a bird. Just amazing, amazing. So that was the core group. It was me, George, Sharon, and Ron. That was the start right. of the Renaissance. Yes. Oh, and, yeah. first and what year was that? 1985. Yes. <laughs> 1985. And what's so funny about that is, because um, I got called in to sing soprano on some of the parts, but then once Ron opened his mouth when he was teaching the songs, I said, he can sing higher than me. He can be for soprano because on some of those, people don't know on some of those tracks, I'm doing alto, he's doing soprano on a, on a couple of the notes. So on my wow. song, especially, he's doing that some of that high note stuff. So he's just he's just phenomenal. And, that, and actually, that's how I kind of got to know him was that first, 
that first gathering, you know, once mm. they put the four together, like I said, how my name, I'm glad now I know how my name popped up because <laughs> I didn't have it, but yeah, I met him that first time we got together, the four of us, and it was just amazing. <laughs> and then Craig, Craig, how did you become so intertwined? It's almost like you were like the Renaissance promoter. I mean, I just... Yeah, I got involved again, talking with George about um, wanting to take this gathering to the next level. Um, mm. So he came up, we, we brainstormed about what we're going to call the group, and he came up with the name Renaissance. Actually, and, that was my idea. Thank you. Oh, was it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he'll, admit, he'll admit to it. The, the, Renaissance, okay, well. the name came from me, but it's all good. But he came up with the concept. And, and then he looked at um, Dean, Weber Dean, you know, that was the other element that he wanted to bring in. And then um, there Kim. Was Kim, right, yeah. Kim, it was Kim Stokes, but it was, I uh, can't think of, remember, who was Kim's Fields? No, Kim, okay, Mitchell. No. Mitchell. Mitchell. <laughs> Kim Mitchell, right, because her brother was also a, a, a bass singer. But, yeah. uh, and again, it was, listen, Renaissance was, nobody had any real background in terms of promotion or management, you know, it was just by the grace of God that the group was able to pull people together out here, like Ron didn't have jobs and we were, were able to make sacrifices <laughs> and get folk out here living with yeah, other was, people. Yeah. You know it, but when they, they when they came together, magic. It was just it was just spiritual magic. The 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 blending, yes, um, and, know, and I, the personalities. I mean, they gelled. That was the beautiful thing. You know, it wasn't no craziness going never, on. Never, never. It was no, always no. fun. Always, always fun. fun. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Just amazing. Yes. And, and there was and ever, ever I was going to say, Willard, I think you set the tone for a lot of that because, I mean, like John said, growing up at Normandy with you and already having that, mm -hmm. con you know, that connection as you being such a, a just a, a force in terms of just wisdom and calm and, you know, being able to relate to us as young people, um, what better anchor to have, yeah. you know, starting out with that is just a, a voice of reason, a calm spirit. And like you said, everybody's spirits just sort of connected. And yeah. um, like you said, it was, it was all laughs. I'm surprised we got anything done. <laughs> you ain't, oh my God. You know, yes. Sharon, I, I agree with you so much because I, I, even though I was in the Valley in Vaughn Street, yeah. every now and then as a kid, I would get to come to some of those youth extravaganzas mm -hmm. or the things that Kriegler would put together. And I was like, this dude is cool, man. I like yeah. this guy. This guy's a nice guy. He yeah. was always fun. And so when he, when, when they said he was going to be like, you know, our, our guy, our manager, or our leader, or, mm -hmm. you know, the tech person we were like everybody's yeah yeah we're the creek yes. <laughs> let me just say this about the, what, what Sharon said about the about the rehearsals or when we got together. Sometimes we would rehearse for like four hours, but it would seem like an hour, but we would just we would just have a just a great time and Ron How long? I'm sorry. <laughs> four hours. How long? Four <laughs> hours? Sometimes it would be four hours. I mean we'd start yeah. at eight in at ten or eleven or start at seven or four and wind up going till eight and sometimes it would be shorter but there was some long days because or some long rehearsals because we had to get well that's out. because we would start out learning songs like you yeah. know ron would give his concept right. and the next thing you know somebody's doing bird whistles and and then all of a sudden now you have like 10 or 12 different bird sounds and, and then you're at the point <laughs> we would clown so much we'd have such a great time that's why some of it would take so long we spent probably an hour and a half clowning around and right. George is quite the character too, you know. Yes, let, me, yes. let me just say this about about Ron in terms of his talent. This dude, to me, I've always had such admiration. We lived together for about a year in the house, you know. Uh, that was actually pretty much because I was in school full time, but we were helped by the church, you know, in terms of the church. They, they we got a spot for you guys, uh, thanks to the <laughs> yeah, yeah, brother, uh, brother Winrow, Doctor Winrow, in the, in the Ministry of Honesty Church <laughs> Christ. They helped us that way with me and Ron. Mm -hmm. But uh, but Ron is a genius, man. Yes. This guy is a musical genius. Yes. He hears things that 
I just, I couldn't understand how he would hear stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, and like Sharon was saying, he could do all the, all the voices. Uh, you know, he could do soprano, he could do tenor, alto, bass, and he would, he would teach me bass parts just by the note sometimes, because mm -hmm. I never considered myself a, a great bass. I just love to sing and, I, you know, God gave me that gift to do it and I was fortunate to be in that group. Uh -huh. And uh, but this guy can hear things that I just don't think a lot of people can hear. And if if he wasn't like doing perfect pitch, almost yeah, perfect pitch. yeah. If, yeah. And if he wasn't doing gospel, he could have done anything secularly. Because if you listen, if you listen to some of his songs, like I, like I have, and most people have, but that dude could have wrote for the Temptations or the right. Whispers or any of those male groups. Because and some of his music kind of has some of that type of a little thing to it, you know. <laughs> hey, George, what's happening, buddy? Where's your girls? Sharing that big dog. Hey, fellas, what's up, Doc? What's going on? All right, how's your week, Grant? How's your week, Grant? Hey, listen, listen. You guys know what time it is. Hey, you guys know what time it is. Look, we've got to start being more professional about about rehearsal. I mean, this this lateness. We've got to start. Hey, Shantido, keep up the devil. Shantido, keep the devil in the night. Shantido, keep up the devil. Everything is gonna be better, right?
can't do this without everybody. So on that song, uh, I never liked the solo. That wasn't my thing. Hey, George wrote that song, Take Your Burdens to the Lord. He said, I want you to sing. And then we, then Waver, what was crazy is when they would put, they'd let me sing a verse and then Waver would come and sing it. I'm like, just let Waver <laughs> sing the whole song. Right. I, don't know why you, I don't know why you put me in this. But it was beautiful. But but during that recording, um, Sharon, the, the, I think, I don't know, it was either George or somebody said, you know, they kind of helped fill in my stuff. They said, I want you to tag him. Yes. And I was That's like, a, what? What's a tag? She's cold with it. <laughs> she is was. cold with it. So she did. <laughs> when you listen to Take Your Burdens to the Lord again, oh, she yeah. had impromptu tag that whole time. Yes. Like a little echo part. Man, come yes. on. Kill yeah. it. It was brilliant. Yeah. Again, you said spirit uh, yeah. anointed. That was yeah. because, again, all this was pr uh, promptu. And, right. you know, we didn't have a lot of time to do a lot of takes. No. Right, exactly. That's money. <laughs> I think yeah. we were in and out about two hours, right? Yes. Maybe. I, yeah, if that. I, like Adam said, um, just being able to, first of all, to hear things. Yeah. But let's not forget, he is a, an ultimate lyricist. Ooh. The things mm -hmm. that he said in the songs were yeah. just mind blowing, you know, and, and then the kinds that you, you know, he could kind of catch the moment, like heavens on the other side is, is one of my all time mm -hmm. favorites, Ron. I mean, hands down. And it just, every time I hear that song, it puts me right there. Like I'm in heaven and I'm walking down and I'm just, right. boom, 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 boom. <laughs> you know, I'm singing the song. It's just, it's just amazing. And of course, like I said, giving George his props too, because he wrote half of them. And, and most of his, he said he wrote in his sleep. He, he kept a pen and paper by the, by the bed so he could wake up and, and put his thoughts down. So with those two together, that di dynamic duo, I call them. Right, right. Yeah, it's just it awesome. awesome. Now, Ron, Ron, Ron writes so majestically. You know, like he wrote, uh, We're Going Home. He wrote, Beyond oh, the Starry yes. Skies. He wrote yeah. Walking in the Heavenly Light. He wrote right. Heavens on the Other Side. It's just, you know, you just wrap your mind around the kind of person that can write in such expressive terms. It's like when you hear those songs, they're so moving in your soul that yeah. you just wonder, you know, if I wasn't a believer, and I told him this today, if I wasn't a believer... <laughs> I right. would believe that you believe that right. you're singing about a place you know about. And he said, "Man, I don't, I don't have any explanation, you know." So it was just uh, it's it, a it, divine it was, stream, brother. Huh? <laughs> it's a divine stream. Yeah. He's got a and, divine stream, yeah. and he was so humble with it. That's the thing. Yeah, he he always had he such a much. humble yeah. spirit about everything, teaching and. You know, it's just like, wow, you're doing this and you're doing that. And I was always amazed. I couldn't yeah. wait to get to rehearsal to see what he was going to come up with next. And I would be amazed. And he was just always so humble about it. Just, you know. Yeah, it's very cool. Just really good. Download your copy of The Lord is in This Place. Here is where our story starts. Southside Congregation has to be the most versatile church in our fellowship. I mean, oh, you yes. guys can do just about any any genre that you can envision. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about some of the congregational songs that Ron's written that you guys sing and I'll get you started. What about Heavens on the Other Side? That's the first thing that's the first thing that came to my mind. Heaven is on the other side. Right. That song has been has gone far and wide uh and and that's one uh, of the staple songs of the churches of Christ, right, and, and we can we can really uh, thank uh, uh, Ron for that to to uh, have our own songs, mm -hmm. and and he was one of the those that are catalysts for uh, mm -hmm. uh, congregational singing, mm -hmm. and and again he inspired us, and we did the Trinity One project with that in mind. Mm -hmm. uh, writing uh, and sharing uh, congregational songs mm -hmm. and songs of worship uh, and, and, and what have you. So he was one of the, the first, uh, Sylvia Rose and, and mm -hmm. some others uh, that have blessed uh, the, 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 and I would say the African-American experience 
mm -hmm. congregational singing in the churches of Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, and we owe them a lot uh, for that. Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, heaven's on the other side. That's that's, <laughs> that's the one. Yeah, yeah. Now, now, have you heard a song that Ron wrote called "Help Me to Survive"? Man, yeah, <laughs> right. Man, man, I was talking with Ron the other day, oh, man. and man, I, I said, "Ron, that song that's Renaissance, right?" Yeah, yeah. But, well, well, Renaissance is the one that sang it, but that was on the 1987-88 Send Us a Revival with Chris Lee, Thomas Fitzgerald, oh, yeah. and Gerald Turner. Okay. And so yeah. those are the ones that I've really heard it, but I heard Renaissance do it too. So yeah. can you talk a little bit about, you know, one or two of the songs that he's written and how it's just changed the game in terms of songwriting? Well, yeah, man, yeah. Um uh, Daddy would would, would 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 go out and do meetings, and one time he brought an album back, and I think it might have been Renaissance, mm -hmm. and uh, and I was just I would just play that music all the time, and those songs were they they really resonated, uh, and 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 they're very dear to my my heart. Mm -hmm. uh, Beyond the starry sky, sky yeah, oh, you know. And you know, we 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 would try to sing those songs and uh stuck on Jesus and right uh we're going home. All give me a clean songs. heart. Give me a clean heart. And we Sin did, a man. We did a version of that uh with the brothers. Right, I saw that we, phenomenal we our, our way. Uh but they inspired uh uh us and we did. We 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 stole some of those songs and uh, and we stole Cool Inside and right. uh, Chris Turner put his little spin on it. Uh, so when people hear committed, when they hear the Southside singers, they're they're hearing Ron Walker mm -hmm. uh, and, and that era back then, and he's still doing it uh, uh, today.
this one. And my California grandma made it here. Uh -huh. I'm going to go back when, when, you know, if you'll have a short nap and, and come late, we'll make it happy. And if you had some, you had it fried down and laid to the side and I'll put it right in here. I see angels flying. Renaissance, when she told me that this group Renaissance was starting, we were like, okay, who is Renaissance? Because we were, you know, stuff was really happening, right? Right. And I too, just like Faith, I thought that Ron Walker had the same kind of voice that George <laughs> Pentagrass did. Right. Couldn't tell him apart hardly. It's like, wait right. a minute, what's going on? Right. And when I finally got to meet him, one of the most humble guys that you ever want to know. Right. Um, I mean, his craft, he, and he's still the same way. And I, have, right. I haven't talked to him very much. Um, but, but I was, I was young, but was all of 17 years old, 18 years old in 1985, I think. Um, and it, you know, his, his talent, um, just surpassed anything that we had really seen on the ground in Southern California from a writing perspective, from a singing right. perspective. And he infused some things with, with us here um, that ch changed the trajectory. Both he, uh, all of these groups, they changed the trajectory of the singing within the fellowship across the country. Right. You know, right. Cause, cause of course, of course, a lot of us, we were already singing anyway, you know, that's what we did. Right. You know, the youth, whether it be Figaro or Normandy, uh, Southside, you know, wherever, um, it's what we did. But uh, the, I think the first time I met him, we were singing at Gompers Junior High. That's typically where most concerts were. <laughs> they at, were at Gompers. At where now? At Gompers okay. Junior High. Oh, wow. Okay. And and finally, I'd already known George because, um, um, uh, uh, you know, the going down that roads, the... The every song that George Pentagrass sang, the growl and everything, I tried to, but I found soon found out that some of those songs was were, were Ron Walker, and so oh. I was just I was just enamored by these guys, you know. Um, and and Ron, he he still today, you know, I heard some stuff that he was doing. I'm like, man, this rascal, you know. As you know, I'm I'm, I'm a lot old, a lot younger rather than Fate and and. Uh, wow. <laughs> wow. and, and so you know Addison Fate all these guys I mean th th these are my big brothers you know mm -hmm. and you know meeting him and experiencing him and I, you know I, we never really sang together on stage other than some of the songs that that he wrote for a group that I was subsequently in called Reflections mm -hmm. um, Mark I didn't know you were in Reflections oh yeah yeah what? Yes, sir. Wow. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, and so I got to sing a lot of Ron's music. Um, uh, when they were recording it, I didn't get to record any. I wasn't in the group at that time, but I was on the album. Uh, me and a gentleman by the name of Billy Thompson, uh, where we were on And the Books Were Open. And the Books Were Open. It's amazing. When my dad moved to Normandy in 83, I had no idea that I was in what was for some the golden era of acapella music of the churches of Christ in Los Angeles. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. And hearing reflections, hearing Renaissance, hearing covenant, hearing agape, uh, hearing the best Mel Ensemble epiphany of that time. Uh, you, know, it, you know, it was, it was, yeah, just, you're I'm, I'm signing off right you, now. You and Daryl Cease. <laughs> Michael Flowers. 
<laughs> but man, we, you know, it, it was it was amazing. So to hear about things from your perspective really provides a historical context that's needed. And my hope is we can revisit some of this because we got to incorporate so many people uh, who we can incorporate in this. Willie Norwood, Cynthia Presley, you know, mm -hmm. so many that contributed. So thank you so much, uh, guys, for your uh, recollection. So, all right, so let's go back. So Ron makes it to Los Angeles. Uh, Adam tells us he 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 pretty much much hops off of, of an 18-wheeler. What do you guys remember <laughs> about his early songwriting? Let me let me kind of start that out. So dad was at Normandy from 83 to about 88, 89. And what Ron used to do is work on music, and then Ron would let me hear it in his truck. Mm. And I can remember clearly hearing all of the songs from... Uh, like he is the king, uh, which was one of my favorite songs. I think he did that with Crystal uh, and several others. But I was just so impressed with his layering. I was impressed with his lyrics. I was impressed with his arranging of the songs. You know, it's hard to do, say, a collection of songs and not have a lot of repetitive movements. But when you listen to Ron's stuff, he has so much diversity. So was that kind of your impression or how did you feel about Ron's early writing back in the day and then what what kind of stuck out to you and we'll kind of start with Adam again and I'm glad you're back brother thank you yeah well the guy was clearly a, a, he's a musical genius to me I, I mean he hears notes I just think differently than maybe a lot of people or he has a way to arrange the notes and, and put these harmonies together and, and make them, you know, pretty easy to sing uh, because I, I wouldn't call myself the most talented bass. I appreciate what Mark said. I, you know, I was, I'm really a baritone, mm -hmm. but uh, Ron would arrange songs that and teach me, actually help teach me to sing, sing those songs. Uh, but the way the guy, he's truly anointed, the way he anointed, he could hear things and put them, put them together. Like I, I just never seen anybody else put them together. I think if he wanted to, you know, he could have done anything. He could have written in, you know, the secular world. He could have written for the Temptations and the Four Tops and all these other, other great musical groups back then. And, uh, uh, but he's, you know, he's anointed to, to this work and he, and he did it. He did it so well in, in a special way. And another thing that Ron used to do was make it so, so much fun. It was, it was always a joy, uh, to work with him. It was always, it was never any angst. It was just, just, just a good time. But the guy was super talented and, and he could, he could do any voice. So, I mean, if you needed to hear the soprano, he could do a soprano. He could do the alto. He could do the first tenor. He could even do the bass. So wow. um, he, he just, he just, he just was amazing, man. Or he is amazing, I should say. Right, right. Still talented. Yeah. Mark and Faye, you guys want to add about his, his uh, songwriting prowess? Well, I you know, because I yeah. I'm I'm pretty much a stickler on words. Um his his depth, heft, if you if you will, um in in how he put so many songs together that that span uh the spectrum of faith. Um when, when you talk somebody mentioned he is the king earlier. Um, for him to be able to conceptualize um, God is King uh, right. and, and put it to song uh, so that people could approach the throne in such a way whereby, um, you know, it, it, it's heartfelt and it's, 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 uh, it's, it's loving. It's, you know, it, all of those things baked into these songs that this guy writes. Um, uh, um uh, you know, um, what, what is this other song? Did, did he wrote it? I've got a home up there in oh, yeah. that heavenly land. You know what I'm saying? Talking right. about going home. Right. You know, and, and we got a lot of songs whereby we, we spoke about going home, but he made it fresh. And, right. he, and, he, and he put it in a way whereby, yeah, we look forward, even young people could look forward to going home with, to be with Jesus. He's Get your copy of our new album today. Your, 
your writing is, is is so majestic. You know, heaven's on the other side. Uh, mm. We're going home. Oh, beyond the starry skies. I mean, you 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 write about heaven in such a way, in such a convincing way. You know, if I weren't a believer, I would listen to your music, Ron, and I would be like, you know, I don't know if I believe in that place, but I know that guy does. You know, that, and you yeah, write with such conviction, you know, beyond the starry skies, you know, we're going yeah. home. And uh, so it's just, you know, it's just very moving to me you know, to hear you write about those things, you know, why, why heaven as a, uh, as a theme for those two songs, were you just kind of like maybe subconsciously focused on that? Or did that just come to you? Or did George say, Hey, Ron, I want you to write about, about heaven or going to heaven. You know, I didn't really give that too much thought. It's just what was, what was in my mind, because when God motivates you to write something, you just go with it. And um, I, I just went with it. There was no theme. We didn't have a theme or anything like that. And believe it or not, he didn't even come to me asking me to write something that falls within the confines of the theme of the album or anything like that. It's just something that was on my heart. I wanted to teach it to Renaissance. And I, I didn't know where it was going to go. But heaven for some reason stayed in my mind i'm going to tell you why it started i think it all started from cool inside back in 1979 that i wrote for the melatonin so long time ago and i don't know that's always been you know in my mind that's been in the forefront for the longest and i said well i don't know maybe 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 god is telling me something you know when i come up with these lyrics that are heaven based you know, and mm -hmm. a lot of my songs do tend to have that, you know, that theme built into it. But, um, yeah, you know, you brought up a good point. That is a good point. I, I never really thought about it, you know, in that realm. But, um, yeah, you're uh, one of the things that we all talk about is your humility. And it's <laughs> very hard when you're in the arts, I think because of the way we're constructed and I only say we in that I'm, you know, on the fringes uh, of this whole art thing, but you know, it, 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 it's a, it's a very hard thing to describe the kind of uh, connection you have to mm -hmm. Yourself and your music, and what you believe God wants to say through you to the world, yeah. and you know, you 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 write in such a way that you know you're not you're not the one that we see. Like those of us who know you, we laud your praises, man. But you're, you know, just the way you write about heaven is is just so moving uh, to me. Uh, Beyond the starry skies. You know, to watch you and George go go back on that. That's how mm -hmm. I was able to eventually learn the distinctiveness between your voice and George's voice. Mm -hmm. You guys, you know, what does that similarity come from? And do you do you think or did you think back in the day that you and George sounded kind of similar? Is that like a New York thing or? You guys, I don't know, like, like sometimes you sound so alike and then sometimes you sound so different. And so I don't mm -hmm. know if that's just because you are with such good friends or what's, you know, what was that connection about between you and George? I thought of that, you know, for a long time. I didn't, I wasn't really motivated to sing until I heard George. Um, I guess it's coincidence um, but when we were teenagers back in New York, um, they did a gospel meeting in which uh, Brother Billy Washington was was doing the gospel meeting. It was at the Apollo Theater. And I had not yet even joined the chorus. I had no intentions of singing, had no intentions of writing. But when I saw that brother up there on stage singing nothing but the blood, I said, that's for me. That's what I want to do. And I never even told George this, but um, he was my motivator 
for actually getting into the gospel acapella music realm. And that was it. Now, the, the thing, whether, you know, we did or didn't sound like we sang, I think that was just, I think it was just coincidence that, that we sounded mm -hmm. alike. Because I've been told that we sounded alike. I never heard it myself, you know, but um, in some songs like Beyond the Starry Skies, some people were actually frustrated because they couldn't tell us apart, you know, when mm -hmm. we were singing that song. I am so sorry. It's just how it came out. We, 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 we. <laughs> inspire you. I was working at this auto parts store, American Auto Parts to be specific. And back then in the day in the 70s, oil came in came in cans. Y'all remember that? And the cans were stacked like six feet high. And there was just enough room to walk in between the cans. And I would make believe I was directing the chorus, you know, during 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 my break. Wow. And believe it or not, this particular song was born back then. So I'm going to need you guys help to help me out. Uh, I've heard this song, song in Canada, United States, Dominican Republic, all over the world. But I've never heard the full version. So I want to share this with a singing church. This is a singing church. And you guys help me out. We're going to sing it from beginning to end, if that's all right. If you don't recognize it, you will. Trust me. It goes, I'm going home. My Jesus, where all the blessed and love reside, I'll find my way up that great ladder. Yes, I will. 
certain group I remember starting off with like the lemon five and then I've been introduced to people all over the land and sea and one particular summer uh, the church took a group of young people to uh, New Haven Connecticut to a youth conference and I don't know if we only had one cassette tape because we used cassette tapes back then I don't know if we only had one cassette tape Oh, that's the only one we elected to play, but we put in Renaissance, Beyond the Starry Sky, that whole album, and I became familiar with it. We knew every word of the song, and that was a song that I really loved, and I believe, if I'm not wrong, I believe Ron wrote this song, uh, We're Going Home. He did. That's, yes, and, and that was one of the ones I just gravitated to. It had a nice little upbeat, doo -doo 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 -doo. you know, and I, you know, we just love hearing it. So we listened to that all the way going to New Haven and pretty much all the way back. So I was locked and loaded and I was just in awe of, of, of their work and his work at that particular point in, in my life. And since then, you know, you know, the sky's the limit. I'm just blown away with, you know, his repertoire and um, you know what he's what he brings to the table and so it, it's just amazing to have such talent in one person so mm -hmm. that's my early story <laughs> actually i did not know him at the time i i knew the name and it, it was years and years until i actually met ron so when i finally met him i was just just humbled and I started recalling all the things that I knew back at that time I just spoke about. And then all of the upcoming things that he's done that people sometimes don't even really realize that Ron put together like uh, things like Heaven on the Other Side. And we, we sing those songs and some people don't even know they have some smooth verses to those songs as well. Right. You know, and I, I was just, you know, like being in music, we, we love and we gravitate to those type things and you know it's just it's just amazing to to know that i, I say he was pretty much ahead of his time if you ask me right because i mean just such a, a gifted individual he heaven sent you know uh kenwood before was also a big you know support of ours yes we yeah, did, we did some we did some stuff in frisco too go ahead Sharon. 
right. I was just getting ready to say, don't forget that that Northern right. California connection because yeah, we yeah. had we did big concerts with Renaissance and Unique, and there were some other groups, oh, some right. other prolific writers like Derek right? Wallace. And, yes, yes. And so, Reflections, yeah, we did a yes. concert with Reflections. And yes. of course, Ron was a part of Reflections. And uh, yeah. sorry, I, Craig, we're, I appreciate we're John what you're doing because you're coming at a time when we've lost so much of that specialness yeah. about yeah. acapella music and the and the gifts. And I'm afraid that the next generation uh, is not seeing the gift that they have been given and a place for that gift. Right. Um, the 80s were a time when people who were gifted as God gave them, there was a platform, there was a movement, there was an encouragement from our fellowship that let's do this music and let's do it right. Um, we're losing that. So right. yeah. I, I appreciate your efforts. Yes, sure. definitely. So when, when the album came out and it was kind of obvious that you guys had something special do you remember the way that you impacted the members of the church in the greater Los Angeles area and then in the country as a person who was sitting in the audience as a, as a, as a teenager, because I wasn't born until 1970. So in 85, I'm 15 years old and I'm just in awe. I mean, wow. you guys were the Jacksons to me. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you really were. And um, I, I was headed to Morehouse and um, Craig did a scouting for scholars at Normandy. Right, the Southwestern. And I think it was the first one they did with Gerald Lee. Mm -hmm. He brought out Summer Tour. Mm -hmm. One of the songs Summer Tour did that really got me was a song that Renaissance sang, Help Me to Survive. Yes. And uh -huh. I heard that song, which, which yeah. I'd heard it previously from Renaissance. And I'm like, man, you know, I'm going to set Morehouse to the side. Mm. I'm going to go to Southwestern. <laughs> and it was, wow. you know, it was just a complete change of direction. And it happened musically. Now, what what we're not talking about so far is Brother Norwood and Southside. And I mean, it's yeah. just yeah. so many people. So many. The Christian yeah. heirs, you know, <laughs> though this is about Ron, we were all so intertwined. And I'm just yes. a child being blessed so from those of us who you know weren't at a level where we could sing with you guys at that time you were like a goal like okay one day I want to sing with or one day I hope to be you know mentioned in the company of because you know your writing your performance the life you guys tried to live and on behalf of all of us who were kids at the time you know, I want to thank all of you and, and just tell you how much uh, you mean to us still. And even when we get together and we talk about that time, I don't know that you'll ever know how persuasive you were in our lives and the decisions that we tried to make. Because, it was, you know, that was at the time where games were taken off, yes. you know, drug use was taken off, uh, drug dealing was taken off. But for a lot of us, you know, you guys kind of kept our focus heavenward and Christ-centered because of the social things that Craig created. And then the yeah. music, you know, I remember going to the bookstore and picking I up the guys. I, I was just I mean, getting was just... ready to speak on that, John. I said, you know, a lot of that, it was community-based too, thanks to Kenwood, because yes. I remember we would get a little amplifier and we would stand we outside in front of that little bookstore. Remember That's that? Right. In the parking lot. And yes. <laughs> And we would have we would have our little session mm -hmm. out there. People mm -hmm. from all over would come, and so yeah, it, and it it was a time. It was a a time that you know it just. I mean, and you always feel good to be in the Lord. I'm not saying yeah. that, but it was yeah. just it was just something about it was needed. Like you said, what was going on in L.A.? You know, you had the drive-bys. You had a whole lot of stuff that was going on back in the '80s, the drugs, things, and everything. And it was just such a fresh relief to be a part of that community, a part of that movement, because it gave us something, you know, it gave us something to hold on to. It really, really did. So yeah. we My father was, well, he wasn't the musical patriarch of the family. Wherever we went to tour, and we, we, we toured, I toured the Walker family, we toured the country. And, well, I'm, I don't sing with the group, I just get up where they need to go. 
and um, we would tour. It was there was five of us, and we toured. I would say probably from about 1975 to about 79 when I left for Southwestern Christian College, and Ma is she was the motivator. I can tell you some stories about her musical skills, you know, and and how this all came about. Um, she wasn't always a member of the Church of Christ. She was a member of the Baptist Church, and um, she would used to bring the house down in the Baptist Church. And then when she became a member of the church and brought that skill set to the church, that was something they haven't heard before. So we channeled that. I, I put the group together, or well, between me and mom, put the group together, and we started touring. And I think our first performance was in Philadelphia. And um, believe it or not, in 1979, when we toured, you know, that, that's, that's when Cool Inside and all that other stuff came, came into play. But um, we got our motivation from mom, hearing her sing in the kitchen while cooking breakfast. And, <laughs> rest is history you know whenever whenever breakfast was about to be served mom would be singing while cooking breakfast and that was something that woke us up in the morning man and that's just how it goes these are what i call diamonds in the rough i call them diamonds in the rough the unsung sort of musical acapella heroes because um if you weren't in the east coast in new york you really wouldn't have heard these people um, but there's two particular people that I really want to bring to the forefront. And that's, uh, first of all, Tiffany Bumpus. And she's got a voice, man, that will just make the angels sing. And she does it so effortlessly. I said, if I don't get this woman on a recording, I will never forgive myself. But she is, uh, she's phenomenal, man. And she loves to sing. That's what, that's what makes it so wonderful. And I've got her highlighted and peppered throughout this entire album. So um, listen out for her. Listen out for Jonathan Wilson. Uh, Jonathan Wilson is another phenomenal singer. Now, he mostly does congregational songs, but he just doesn't give himself enough credit. So I said to myself, I am gonna, I'm going to reintroduce a song that I wrote for Ronette Chapman at Northside Church of Christ and modernize it, bring it to the forefront and give it to John. John just did an amazing job. So. My purpose for Ron Walker and Company is to highlight that talent from the East Coast and uh, get them out there so people know who they are and the talent that they possess. So that's, that's my whole purpose. That was the whole purpose of this whole album. And we're still not finished with it yet, but Lord willing, we hope it'll be done uh, by June. If I just keep if I just keep if I keep if I just just hold on to his hold on to his hand everything will be that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. If I just keep, 